Hi there, Yolita Brilliant. I am Nicholas Relation. And this is episode 13. One, three. Brilliant Wealth and Wellness Podcast. Mm -hmm. And we're here today um, going to be discussing. We came back from 10X conference, hence mm -hmm. my hat. Where is your cash flow hat? Mm, I'll have to get it. Yeah. Well, and also, if you notice, we're recording today from our home studio that we uh, just put together. So, 10X was a great experience for me personally. Um, there's always what you learn you won't carry on your shoulders. That's what my grandmother used to say. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot. Um, also, I discovered the weaknesses that I could improve my business and things that I've been slacking off because anything even like bad employees or uh, attitude or any sort of problems it all you know it all stems to the manager it all stems to the owner mm -hmm. um, because what you tolerate grows and you know what I've gathered from this conference is that you as a leader it's not a it the most important thing is not to be liked the most important thing is to be respected and effective for the business of I mean of course people going to like you they're gonna follow your direction mm -hmm. more willingly but at the same time it's also important to not get carried away where you want to be liked so much that you're afraid to you know reinforce the rules or fire people that are not a good fit for your company well, when you want your employees or just anybody in general to follow you out of respect not out of fear yeah yeah I mean it should not be ever out of fear you know if someone's like fearful of you I don't want that employee in our company if someone's afraid of me because I don't think I'm such a scary person because I would never mm -hmm. do or fire anyone unjustly you know mm -hmm. um, we only would do that for the best interest for that person and for us, you know, if they're in the environment where it's not suitable, where they can be, where um, they, you know, would be better with their, let's say, personality or outlook or skill set, you know, that's a win-win for, for both of the people. So we never would, you know, do anything from a place of any sort of malice or negativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important that if you do need to let an employee go, is that the employee knows why. Yeah. A, why they're getting let you go. You have to give them and, and B, before. it should never be a surprise. I think, my personal opinion, it should never be a surprise for someone either when they get let go. Yeah, well, it should not be, um, you should always give them opportunities to correct. Mm -hmm. Because if they're new, they might not know exactly what's your workplace culture or what's acceptable, what's not, what's appropriate. Even though they, they I mean, most people are professional. You don't have to teach them like basic professionalism or basic mm -hmm. life skills. Um, but, you know, some people might be uh, coming from a different perspective, maybe from another workplace or things like that. So you want to always give them opportunity to correct. But if they don't, because there is people that um, can become bad because of certain circumstance. And there's people that are chronically bad, where no matter where they go, they, mm -hmm. they're finding problems, they have finding drama, they're finding, you know, arguments, they're finding, they're not contributing in a positive way. That's a chronic person, unfortunately, you cannot fix because they gonna, they're going to grow like cancer. And then that one negative person is going to complain about something, it's going to reel in another person oh yeah you know it does suck like i do hate this like why do we have to like do this this way or whatnot mm -hmm. so they start to grow like cancer slowly and like that one thing can you know empires from fall from the inside 
most empires fall because um, the leadership gets relaxed and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, well, and it's important that, you know, people, employees and people just in general know the reason behind why things are the way they are. And one example that I can use is years ago when I was doing work for um, a company that was on the brink of doing or on the brink of going public, working on things that were necessary for the IPO. There was a lot of things happening, a lot of money being spent. And when you would ask, why are we doing this or what's the platform behind this? And the answer was almost always, well, we need to do this because of the IPO. You know, people need to know why they're doing things to understand why it's important for the business. And to Yolita's point, if they know why something is the way that it is, the less likely there is for a chance for them to question yeah. it. And if they're still not happy about it, you know, there's mm -hmm. still... Um, that means they're not for best interest or yep. not on the same page with what the, everyone else, what the team is trying to do. Well, and sometimes know? it's just not a good fit. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, you know, the conversation that I've had with tenants before is sometimes it's just not a good fit. Yeah, I mean, and, it's, yeah. you know, and if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit and it's not fair for the employer. It's not fair for the employee. And, you know, it's okay to go your separate ways and wish yeah. each other success yeah because you know if it's like we do business because we enjoy it because uh, we want to spread uh, positivity wellness to the world and mm. serve the community <clears throat> and so that means you know yeah though the, sometimes there will be some a little bit like disagreements or like questioning things uh, but overall you know there shouldn't be any animosity or um, problems, you know, but anyway, so we really expanded on this topic right now, but you know, so that's one of the things, you know, keeping companies culture. And so to bring back my point, what 10 X being there, um, inspired me to be a braver person, be a braver leader, because there are things that I saw in the business that I've been wanting to um, take action on for actually quite a few years now, but like COVID happened and then, you know, you kind of have to just focus, get afloat because of that, you know, but now we're like past it. So now like we can really tighten up little uh, loose ends, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, and also 10X, you know, Grand Cardone's uh, uh, Cardone University, um, they have where it kind of helps people to get onto that same page. So I thought, <clears throat> I thought I'll give it a try for our team. So that's something we're trying right now. And actually I am seeing, um, uh, good improvement, uh, helping me to get the team on the page, like more with the sales mindset and, um, technology. Cause if we only try to do sales on the management and like, like newsletters promotion but not on uh the pe people that actually do the services and and meet mm -hmm. that client one-on-one -on -one in person if they're not um promoting you know the the benefits or savings of our memberships and regular care benefits like it's it's not the same effect you know well, and, you know, there needs to be incentive, too, you know, for your employees to sell. Yeah, I mean, right? they get commission, you yep. know, they get bonuses, right. things because, like that. Because, you know, sometimes when, you know, someone's an employee, they're, you know, they're an employee. But right? they're commissioned employee, too, though. So they're you need to incentivize sad. with either sales promotions or sales contests or or. or or whatever but I think the biggest thing with sales is that you know it's it's like real estate agents right there's a lot of real estate agents out there there's some that are really good some that are really bad yeah you know some that um, have the best interests of their clients and some that and are not some, really and some that their clients best interest is 
the last thing on their mind because they just want to get the deal done. And, the commission. Right. Yeah. And you can look at the NAR, you know, settlement um, that recently just happened and form your own opinions about real estate agents. But to, to go back to what we were talking about is look at, you know, salespeople. There's some really good salespeople that, you know, really try to look at what you need. Yeah. And how Match. that they can help you. And, you know, the very first time that I went to actually buy a, a, a brand new vehicle and a buddy of mine who had, you know, he's one of those people that buys a new car every few years. And his whole thing was, you know, when you're doing the negotiation with the salesperson, make sure that the money remains on your side of the table, right? And you don't want a salesperson that is spending your money. And no, and it's the same thing with employees. You know, you want them to be, you know, showing the customer the benefits of whatever they're trying to sell. You don't want to sell something to someone that they don't need because that's going to leave a poor taste in well, their that's mouth. Well, bad. that's bad sales tactic or ethic, yeah. And they yeah. won't come back. They won't buy it from you again yep. if you sold them something that was crap they didn't need you know mm -hmm. uh they're not gonna be returning customer like so sale is actually a service that you provide it's really important to understand that sales is a service because you're explaining you're matching that let's say membership to a person that will give them great benefit it will give them savings it will keep them on track coming back every month they won't forget to book their next appointment they will um, feel better have more energy less pain mm -hmm. you know or better skin whatever type of you know they choose facials massage alternating each you know appointments or so it's really a service matching mm -hmm. um is what a good not cringy sales well, is yeah you know a lot of people look at sales as manipulation right you know and that's the sign of you know a bad sales tactic it's you know that very hard sale or going for the sale before you build report with the person or really understand what they need mm -hmm. yeah and find out what could benefit them which then benefits you and the business right it's a win-win yeah so you know finding the, the 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 point in the process of what you can do as an upcharge or you know for the client but that's going to benefit them and then indirectly benefit you, you know? Well, yeah. And mm -hmm. also like um, for tenants, you know, for example, when you make a sale, well, not a sale if you rent it to someone, you know, um, you don't want to rent it to the wrong person mm -hmm. because yes, they might be upset or they might want this apartment and they, why you didn't rent it to me? Why you rent? Because at the end of the day, actually, I would do this service to you if I rented this to you because, you know, let's say your income is short of what the minimum, you know, 2.5 or 3 times the rent should be. And you're going to be struggling. So, you know, you'd be better off to look something that's a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's really matching the person. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this would be, this studio would be better for you than yeah. this one. I was just going to mention that it's, you know, it's looking at, they might be a great tenant. They might, you know, have really good credit score or their income might be good. But if, you know, their income is going to put them into hardship by them renting a one bedroom or a two bedroom, you know, that's, that's a bad sale. Oh, I mean, we can't, yeah, right. right we you can't know. take you just because you say you want it. Right. You know, um, and the, you know, the numbers don't lie at the end of the day. So if, if someone is like, you know, what, Hey, you'd be great, you know, but really the only thing that we can offer you is a studio yeah. because that's what your, your income is going to allow you to afford because yeah. no one no, no one wants to be struggling right yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's a it would be doing a disservice to a tenant to say hey you know we're going to rent you this two-bedroom apartment knowing that they're not going to be able to afford it or food, just barely know? be yeah. able to afford it yeah because when it comes to rent or food you know it 
it, it's food, right? Yeah. So we're you know? protecting ourselves, but also protecting right. the person who it, might not know finances yeah. good. Even yeah. it's like, you know, selling a vehicle. If someone goes in and they're like, you know, hey, I want a Grand Cherokee Summit, which is the very top end trim level of Grand Cherokee. But it, you know that they're going to be barely able to afford that vehicle it's you're doing a disservice to your client to say oh yeah you know what well, and a couple hundred advance. bucks more you know a month you know what's that going to do right, for you right, don't but, eat don't eat out once or twice yeah but that's why banks that's why banks uh won't lend it to you you know they look at your debt to income ratio they look at your credit score how you're able to to budget and pay back mm -hmm. the debt services and things like that um, the other thing from the next conference, what I uh, found is um, what what recurring theme to me really stuck in my head. What got you there won't get you, what got you here won't get you there. You know, a lot of like businesses go through breakpoints. Okay, you got to like let's say one million revenue. Do you stuck now? You can't increase your profits no more. Or you need to like grow locations, you need to hire maybe uh, coaches, um, maybe manager, different things who, and it's like Brandon Dawson talks about, about this a lot, you know, like these break points, but I've been hearing, you know, I'm experiencing that myself as well. Yeah, and I think a really good example of the break points that Yolita just talked about in a business kind of stalling is, is look at Microsoft, right? So, you know, when Bill Gates handed the reins over to Steve Ballmer, and I think arguably Steve Ballmer is probably one of the most brilliant CFOs in the, in, in the entire world, who unfortunately was given the task of running a company, a technology company that required constant innovation. You know, they held on to products too long. They drag their feet getting into new areas of business and you know one thing is you know Microsoft being a cloud provider but you know Amazon beat them to that business because they were willing to invest and saw the the desire for it where Steve Ballmer just didn't see it and you know they historically were late to different aspects and sometimes that's the same thing with business as you get to a certain point because you've been doing well, you know, we've gotten this far just by using word of mouth or, you know, client referrals. And then you maybe get to a point where it's just like, you know what, that's just not the way to keep growing this business. You need to do something else. And maybe that is growth through acquisition, growth through acquiring, um, you know, more locations, more corporate locations, or doing some sort of, you know, paid advertisement like paid social. Well, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you'd not, if you're not doing paid marketing, um, I don't know how you can grow a business. You know, you, you have to do that these days. Um, I feel like, you know, every company on a planet that wants to grow, but like you said, um, also other ways like, acquisition mm -hmm. and or merging uh just you have to start thinking outside the box you know things that you have not been doing because what you've been doing and and you are comfortable in that comfort zone you, you guess what you're never gonna get to that next level if you not change or add or remove things that you've been doing but now you need to do it you know mm -hmm. differently yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what was your biggest takeaways? Um, I think, you know, the one thing that I really liked was a lot of the journeys that people went on to become, you know, what they are today. Tyler Perry, for instance, was a, a interesting story. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think a lot of people know his story just in general. Um, but, you know, it was interesting, especially with... Arnold, you know, he, basically everyone told him, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And he essentially, they thought he was stupid, you know, for doing these things. And turns out, you know, hindsight's obviously 2020, but, you know, everyone thought he was the dumbest person in the room. Turns out he was actually the smartest person in the room. But, you know, also making decisions based on, 
what you know at the time and, you know, keep refining that process over the years. And that's why you never listen to naysayers. Um, we got time. At, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, you never listen to um, people that have not done it and they're trying to give you advice. I mean, you might love your sister, parents, grandparents, but if they're not in business, unfortunately, you cannot take their business advice. Unless they've done it, unless the person done, even your spouse, you know, if they're not, if, if they have not done that thing before, you cannot take their advice, you know, if they're telling you, oh, that won't work or like, don't do it this way, because that's a dangerous thing to do to take advice from people. Like if someone tells you, um, well, I um, never done, you know, real estate, but I know it's really bad because you get calls for toilet like every night, you know, and it's just like horrible dealing with tenants. Like that's some perspective that they heard somewhere that is just not true, you know? Yeah, I think it's important to get opinions from people, right? You, you know, can different get opinions, perspectives, so different ideas. And then at the end of the day, it's, you know, your responsibility or whoever's soliciting that advice to, to take the best advice that they think at the time. And, you know, it, it goes without saying, you know, there's going to be things that are going to come up in life and you need to make a decision. And you make the decision based on what you know at the time and you hope that that's the right decision. And if it's not, then you try to get more information and make a better decision the next time. Yeah. But, you know, I think a lot of people have different perspectives on things just because maybe they weren't a business owner themselves doesn't mean that they can't give other people business advice. But I and I'll show you an example of that as, you know, at 10X, just a conference in general, this year was heavy on a lot of athletes, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know... They're employees, right? You know, if it's a if it's a, a, a person that's a quarterback for a, a a football team, you know, they're an employee of that company. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still take advice from them. But they're in still... the business for their image. They're kind of, they sell their, yeah, they might be employed by the company, but then they also have different contracts with like marketing agencies, you know, advertising, stuff like that. They're still in the business though. So it goes back to what I just said, you know. Just because someone is not necessarily in the exact business or yeah. has a direct experience to what you're looking for mm -hmm. doesn't automatically make their opinion invalid. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't hold as much weight as someone that's been in, say, hey, I've been a business owner. I've scaled five businesses. I've done this, this, and this over 40 years, you know, et cetera. Okay, maybe their advice is better. Maybe it's not. Maybe they got there by being a... Uh, shady salesperson making promises that they couldn't keep i don't think you can be a shady salesperson and successful for 40 years so i have to disagree with that statement there's you know used car sleazy used car salesmen and you know bad real estate agents out there yeah but they're not successful i don't think if you're bad you're not going to be um it's a small world out there, right? Yeah. But it's also a big world out there, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know... You might get by, but I don't think you'll make it big. There's advice from all different types of people. And the one thing at, you know, going to a business conference is... I think that's what they kind of try to, to show is that... Okay, this person's an athlete. This person came from this background, this, that, or this... And there's tidbits of information that you can get and opinions yeah. from everybody. It's transferable. And, and that yeah. information then goes to, you know, just I'll point it myself. You know, I take all that information and then I say, well, how does that apply to a technology business? Mm -hmm. Hey, someone that's a successful quarterback or has had a lot of sponsorships with, you know, say Nike or Cannondale or whatever, you know, okay, 
none of that has anything to do with technology, right? Mm -hmm. They're not selling cybersecurity solutions. They probably don't even know what cybersecurity is. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But you can look at, you know, a sale is a sale, whether you're selling, you know, this, this diamond that's in the lower portion or, you know, you're selling software. The ethics of a good salesperson translates from one industry to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's a journey, you know, it's transferable. But what also recurring theme is that we heard over and over again, regardless whether you're in sports or in finance or real estate, um, there is no shortcuts. And like all of these people worked really hard. And it's easy for some people to say or think that, oh, this person just had it easy and it's like overnight success. But like a lot of them sacrifice their like 10 years living, you know, shitty apartment with five roommates trying to get by while they work on their dream, you know, to have what uh, like this theater that, um, you know, I forgot the name was it Tyler Perry uh I it, you know Tyler Perry you know was a unique story where you know for he was homeless a couple of times you know he was basically living paycheck to paycheck if he even had a paycheck he was living in his car you know and I think that was seven or eight years yeah. until you know he was about to he give was, up yeah. and you know then that's when you know, his big break yeah. happened. And it's the same thing with like, with, you know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I was going to say. And, you know, the one thing that I like about Arnold that he's been, he said for years and years and years is that he hates when people say he's a self-made man. Mm -hmm. Because he said that, that that's not true. He's like, I'm the first one to say it. You know, when he came to this country and he even said, you know, he came here illegally and he had nothing, yeah. you know, so, you know, the people at that Gold's Gym, you know, mm -hmm. gave him some clothes and, you know, helped get him, you know, some food. And, um, you know, I was, I guess maybe I had, maybe I had heard or hadn't heard it, but, you know, that he was also in real estate, you know, started. No, he was. You know, was. but. That's you know, how he was able to act without having to take bad roles. Yep. But the mm -hmm. thing with his real estate portfolio is, you know, this one lady, Olga, who I can't remember where she he said Sounds like Russian she was name. from, you know, was the one that was like, you know, oh, you've got you know, some money, okay, you're going to buy this place, and you're going to live in the owner's unit. And from kind of what he said, he was just like, oh, okay, this makes sense, you know, and then she helped him trade up and keep selling mm -hmm. and keep selling. And, you know, that's a perfect example of a real estate agent doing the right thing for their client. Well, it's a win-win. It was mm -hmm. good for her to sell that property it was good for him to acquire that. Property. Yeah, but she did it in a way that he could trust her, you know, she got yeah, him into repeat, something, yeah, you know, customer. a small, a, a, a starter place and then trade up and trade up and trade up and trade up, not immediately going to something that, okay, it's going to be a bigger paycheck for her initially. But he probably couldn't afford the, the bigger place right. to begin with. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's about creating and that's a lot of sales is obviously, you know, there's the, the, the aspect of of the investigation and seeing what works, but then, you know, it always comes down to the money aspect of it too. And when money is exchanging hands, both parties need to be comfortable that, you know, they are doing the right thing. And especially sometimes the salesperson even more so needs to be diligent about it because what they're selling, the person might not exactly understand and they're putting some level of trust in the salesperson. But, you know, one of the things that I really, it's a big pet peeve of mine, especially with software sales and technology sales, is salespeople selling a product for what it's going to be, not what it is right now. And that's a very key poor, excuse me, important lesson, I think, for anybody that's working with technology or software or anything is make sure that you understand what you're buying is right now, not what the salesperson is selling you for what it's going to be well, six, eight, nine months Well, they need the money down. to keep building those features. But that's okay if you sell 
the product for what it is right now. And this is what we're planning on it to be down the road. Because, you know, one of the, the um, you know, kind of like an inside joke is, oh, well, um, you know, it, it's coming. You know, the, the pizza is coming. You know, the, the, the eclipse is coming. Well, so is Christmas. You know, Christmas is coming too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, selling something for what it potentially will be down the road is okay if you say, this is what we're planning on down the road. Mm -hmm. This is the six, eight month roadmap. Yeah. That's what we're hoping it's going to be. This is what it is right now. This is what you are buying. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is different industries have, you know, mm -hmm. a little different problems and things. Um, but overall, you know, what the biggest point for me is that nothing came easy. And those people that might have jealousy or see things on Instagram Oh, like this person driving this car or they bought you know this property um, most like 99% of the time <clears throat> they had to make very big sacrifices to make that happen you know this is excluding people that inherited stuff um, I'm talking about people that you know earn that stuff and they probably made sacrifices that you're not willing to make you know Maybe you're not willing to move away from your family, you know, for a job that might be paying more, you know. Maybe uh, you're not willing to lose on your kid's um, football game, you know, because you have to work. Well, unfortunately, these people had to sacrifice. I feel like people that say you can have it all, I don't believe that. I feel like everyone makes some sort of sacrifices and this thing balance if you, you're gonna be average if you have balance like for me like do balance that's right for you you know you don't have to do balance that's right for other people because for me if I want something happen I go in all way like I don't care if I have to work Sundays I don't hear, care if I have to stay up work till 11 p.m. you know I'm gonna want to make it happen and not everyone was willing some people well you know it's 5 p.m. No more work, you know. Well, unfortunately, that's what others are willing or not willing to do. Um, then you see the results later, and it's it's just hard work. It's just working harder is going to give you better results. It's just the way it is. Yep. You know, there's nothing, obviously, you know, hard work is rewarded at some point, right? Hopefully most of the time. <laughs> but, you yeah. know having a balance especially when it comes to family and business and you know to to what you lead us point is okay well you know i'm gonna keep working keep working keep working keep working and oh i miss my kids you know football game i miss this i miss that i miss this and oh i did show for one thing um you know if that's what you want then then you know by all means do it but, you know, I was just, when Yolita was thinking, I was thinking of Harry Chapin's song, Cats in the Cradle, where, you know, life is now, right? So, you know, you always but want to make are sure. But there later, those fruits of your labor, you know. Yep. But there's only one football game, right? You know, there's when there are so, certain ages or concerts yeah. or, or, or whatever. Yeah. And if you and your family and your balance dictates that that's how you, you know, if whatever. that's your priority. Whatever you've done, you know, but then, you know, later on, you know, you might be able to reap the fruits of your labor in terms of your business or how well your business has done. But something like your family life might not be exactly where you want. Well, but it's then possible. the question is, is your spouse on board with those goals, you know? Like, are they willing to look after the kids while you're trying to make business or work happen, you know? So, and it's some people, they have perfect balance, you know? Their spouse, like, understands and doesn't complain about those things. And for other people, it's not okay. So uh, it's really what's right for each person. Spouses you know? make decisions. 
you know, because they were, they made a decision to be partners or get married or whatever. But, you know, when it comes to children, a lot of times the decisions are made for children. Yeah. And just make sure that those decisions that you're making yeah. are the best for yourself, <clears throat> your spouse, your health, your family, your children. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, for children, for for children, actually, um, children of working moms, for girls especially, are more successful than girls that have moms that don't work outside the house. Um, is really by example, you know. And there's and and for boys, it's less impact because I think boys are molded by society already to kind of be breadwinners and you know that they always have to like provide and and work but um yeah you know it's really what's right for you there's no right or wrong and it's totally fine if you want to show example for your daughter that you want your daughter to be a stay-at-home mom that's fine too you know but um it's just shown that studies you know girls sometimes um less attention or like missing some things because you have to go to work it's not really a bad thing like my parents really didn't come to much of any of my like music place and i never was upset it didn't even occur to me that oh my gosh my dad didn't come to see me play piano because he had to work like that was never a thing like i was happy oh my dad is doing his thing you know he loves like doing sales and real estate or whatever he was doing i would rather him do that and come like waste time sitting for three hours waiting for my five minute play you know and this three hour other kids playing so i mean it's really depends what's what's right for each family i think mm -hmm. yeah but um but overall uh seems like Next year might be the last 10x, but overall, I've got a good value out of it. Um, and might attend some of the workshops because um, I got included. And in, um, when when I purchased the Cardone University, we got some uh, sales, marketing, and summit. So we'll see what that's going to be all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, the conference just in general was good. Um, you know, I would, I don't have very good things to say about the venue <laughs> that the conference was yeah. actually held at, but you know, that's obviously I, partially the, the promoters, but also, but just in the general. The Wi-Fi was not good. Well. It's terrible. They need to hire you to help <laughs> them. You know, so, but you know, I think. IT and VT. <laughs> The, the next conference is going to be in Las Vegas. I, you know, personally, I'm kind of like, ugh, like, I don't want to go back to Las Vegas again because I've been there so many times. But, you know, um, there is a lot of cool things to do. The venues might be better. Yeah, you know, so I think overall, it was, you know, it's a good conference. Um, you know, we um, stacked a little bit of, um, you know, personal business um, in front and behind the the um, conference, which was nice, and um, you know, with the recently having a direct flight from where we are to Florida, was pretty nice. Bonus and we too. went to Key West, and yeah. we went to Orlando. And just in general, Disney, you know, it's with trip. you know, being a business and being a business owner. If you're always in the same geographical area, you know, you see the same thing every day and a lot of people doing the same thing yeah and, and looking at what oh what the guy across the street is doing yeah. or her or who or whatever totally. but just going to a different area you get some more ideas you know you get to talk to different people expand your network see opens what opens up your view you yeah know? see what works What's you possible. know um you know just one of the things like when we were in key west and i ran, ran to the car and i was going back to do something and you know uh, like their hot water heater was just outside, you know, all the plumbing was exposed. And I'm just like coming from Vermont, I'm like, oh my God, this stuff is going to freeze. Like, and I'm like, oh wait, yeah, you know, it's it Florida. It does so, not freeze. But, you know, it's just thinking of different things. And, you know, we did a day at Epcot with my aunt and uncle. And, you know, one of the things that Disney really has down is, you know, how 
they do customer service and how, you know, their parks are ran and thinking of all these different things. And, you know, the, the focus that they have on customer service and that it doesn't matter if you're the, the guy, you know, making 10 bucks selling coffee to the CEO making $10 million. You know, if you're walking through the park and someone asks you a question, you own that question until you get them an answer. Or, hey, there's, there's debris on the ground, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, pick it up. You know, we're all in this together. But I think the biggest thing, and there's another hotel chain that, that does it, but you know, it's any guest asks a, a, a member, an employee, hey, uh, you know, where do I get a coffee or, you know, where are the bathrooms or whatever, you know, employees are not, not allowed to say, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good and then, and then, And then that's it. You yeah. know, they can say, Let me find you know, out. that's a great question. I, I really don't know. But you know what? I'm going to call my buddy, you know. Well, you don't or, say, I don't know. You say, let me find right. out. Yeah. And then you own that question until you get resolution and and the resolution might be hey you know i i i found someone else they're gonna help you out or hey i talked to someone else this is where you can go for this this and this but you know having that continuity i can't remember i wish i remember that maybe it's marriott but there's a hotel chain that is very adamant about that as well if anybody a, a guest ask someone, you know, the hotel manager or anybody, hey, you know, this, this or this, that employee then owns that issue until it's resolved. Yeah. Yeah. It's important for the culture. Um, the other thing what inspires me is um, about, to, you know, Grant Cardone gets a lot of hate, but mostly because he's very obnoxious when he does interviews because I think he wants to get he gets like more views that way but like in person if you listen to him there like he's he's not crazy like some of these clips get cut out and posted you know to like he's actually he is really good at sales well at least at basic sales like he is he knows what he's talking about um and, you know, they aren't like Brandon Dawson is good at business. They actually done it. You know, they're not just like making stuff off or just like motivational speakers that have not lived through it. You know, they have failed in the past. They have they have done these things. So that's why I always stress people that talk from experience and not from just like, you know, reading a book or whatever. Mm -hmm. And life is the best education, like the best college, you know, some people spend a ton of money on college. And then when they graduate, they don't even know the basic sales, you know, like, which is very important in life. Because if you know that, you're always gonna have a job. If you're good with people and communication, um, you're always gonna find something that you can do some way that you can make a living. Yeah, and I kind of equate it to the technology industry is, you know, anybody, or I won't say anybody, but the vast majority of people that are in technology start off in a, a help desk related role, you know, hey, I can't print, the computer's broken or whatever. That teaches you the interaction between, you know, customers and, you know, a way to regurgitate technology speak into something that a non-tech person can understand but then you also understand the the ramifications of making a change that then affects end users and one of the things in technology is if you've never had that experience of being on the front lines of answering the questions of, in, of interacting with customers and you kind of skip that by going into more of like an administrator or architect role right off the bat, you're always going to be at a disadvantage because you don't clearly, or maybe not clearly, but you don't have the full picture of how decisions that are made higher up will then trickle down. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's like, you know, at a restaurant, you know, like starting off, you know, bussing tables and serving and, you know, then maybe you move up to a restaurant owner but you have that whole picture of... Or you know, get by into, like, places 
you could buy into franchise, you know, like franchises. Yep. You could start off as an employee, learn the yep. system, and then save up some money, you know, over even several years, you know. You might need to save for five years. You yep. might need to skip the, you know, some vacations to save up that money. But it's possible, you know, and then you could become a business. We have franchise opportunity for that reason, for people that would like mm -hmm. to own their own branch at some point. So. Yep. That, that's why we have it. We have everything for everyone. You don't want to be an employee? Here you go. You can be a business mm -hmm. owner. You know, yep. we can help you. Um, yeah. And then one more thing. Um, I want to go back when we were talking about um, employees that might not be the right fit is that um, it, you don't want to let them quit, though. You want to fire them because if you when people quit it's sending a message to other employees that you did not see that this person was not the right fit while everyone else is actually already seeing that that person is like disruptive or not following mm -hmm. you know the direction that the company is going and then also when they when they're gonna create bad morale because of course they're going to be bad mouthing and saying, Oh, this place is crap. You know, this is, I'm leaving, you know, so you want to be ahead. You want to be ahead of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably a good segue to probably wrap up this episode just because episode 13 episode one, oops, one, three. How does it like that? There we go. <laughs> Yep. Um, thank you for tuning in. Yep. Give us a like, subscribe, follow, whatever whatever platform you see this. Do do what thing you're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're on like iTunes, Spotify, yeah. YouTube, if you find Instagram. This, you know, helpful, and you know, we would love some feedback and to share it with your friends because yeah. hopefully we can. Some people can take some of our advice, or maybe they. This is don't not want to take professional, our legal, or financial advice. Just so you know. Yep. Yep. It's advice. Always consult your attorney, financial advisor before you make any changes. Exactly. Yep. All right.